Steven Nikon says that this is the cool camera. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and this is a preview of the Nikon ZF. We've seen the Nikon ZFC, which is a crop sensor retro camera. Well, this is a full frame retro camera, and we're gonna go through all of the specs, the bells and the whistles, the sample images, and everything I was able to do with it to tell you, is it different than the ZFC? Is it better? Should you get it? Who it's for? We're gonna talk about that throughout this video. Now, this is a pre-production model. Even though it says firmware 1.0, which means it's really not a pre-production in my opinion, but Nikon says it's pre-production so that they could basically say if we find any issues, well, it's pre-production. I don't buy it, but it is what it is. That's why we do not call this a review because it's called a pre-production model. Now, Nikon only had one unit available for us to play with. Normally, when I'm out there doing the shoot, Steven has the same camera, so he could do the video of me so we can kill two birds with one stone. In this case, Steven filmed with the Canon R5, which is what we use for most of our run and gun stuff, so you do not get to see the sample video out of this camera. Now, in terms of shooting, I was able to use it for about an hour in the park to photograph a brother and a sister, which they were really good models for us to use out into the park, but it takes a lot of cajoling to get Nikon to allow us to do anything with these cameras, whereas other companies, they just send us cameras like a month in advance and we get to go use them and actually do a lot with them. In this case, we had about an hour of shooting time to use it. Now, there is no RAW support just yet, so I shot RAW plus JPEG. I'll edit the RAWs in the future. The JPEGs honestly looked really good and all the sample images that you see in this video were edited with Fropac 4. In terms of the body, it's styled after the Nikon FM2. That that's where you get the retro style of the body. Now in your hands, physically the camera feels much better than a ZFC. The ZFC looks like it's metal, but the ZFC being crop sensor and much less expensive is very plasticky feeling in the hands. This camera feels like a solid metal feeling camera. Dials feel nice, the feel of the body feels Okay, the buttons are placed well, except for the shutter button is kind of in an awkward place. It's retro, but where it absolutely feels terrible is the, the grip. And it, it barely has anything to hold on to. When you try to shoot vertically, my hand was hurting from crimping. It just didn't feel good in the hands. I get it, you want a retro style camera, but that doesn't mean that it still needs to feel like crap. There's a reason we have 50 years of design uh, ergonomics from when the FM2 came out to now. It's just because stuff gets better and feels better. It can still look retro, but have a better feeling grip. Now, thankfully, Nikon worked with small rig, which I don't think you should do. You shouldn't have to work with a third party company to make a grip for a camera that you haven't even put out yet. Just make the grip feel better from the, from the jump. But there is a small rig grip that makes it much better to shoot with and it feels much better. I mean, look at it compared to a Z6 II. You can see what the grip for that looks like. That feels great. This is just a grip for ergonomics. It doesn't add any extra abilities. I fully recommend if you go with this camera and you actually care about it feeling good in your hands, you buy the small rig grip right off the rip because it's just gonna make shooting a heck of a lot easier. Now, Nikon says that they were going for the cool factor when making this camera. They said that people gravitated towards the ZFC, so they decided to go with a full frame version because people like dials, I, I guess. But I think the biggest question that's gonna come out of this for Nikon shooters is why didn't you focus on the, uh, the Z6 III first and then put out a retro style camera like this because we're gonna talk about the specs in just a minute. Now in terms of the sensor, you have the same 24.5 megapixel sensor that you found in the Z6 II, which means you also found it in the original Z6 as well, but it is tweaked now with the Xpeed 7 processor, which is why people will question, why are they putting that into this camera and focusing on this before focusing on the Z6 III style camera. 
Now, one of the things I should mention that there is a switch on top of the camera that allows you to go into a dedicated black and white mode. Basically, all that is doing is changing the picture style. They give you two different styles of black and white that you can shoot. Now, if you shoot JPEG, that's gonna be baked in. You can never get the color back. When you flick into that switch, it does transition from color to black and white right inside of the viewfinder. Uh, but if you shoot RAW, you, you of course can shoot in black and white and then edit in color later if you wanna go back to do that. You still have the same 3.69 million dot EVF. It's bright, it's clear, it's vibrant. It's a really good electronic viewfinder. You also have a nice 3.2 inch, very angle 2.1 million dot touchscreen on the back. This is one of the first Nikon full frame cameras to go ahead and put that very angle, which might be a harbinger of what's to come in future cameras. Now, in terms of ISO, the native ISO goes from 100 to 64,000, whereas the Z6 II went to 51,200. You can shoot, even though this is a retro camera, at 11 frames per second with the mechanical shutter when you're shooting RAW and 14 frames per second with the mechanical when you're shooting JPEG, even though when I tested it out, I got 12 frames and 15 frames a second, so you're probably squeezing out just a little bit more than Nikon was able to get themselves. I don't know why, we got a little bit more. Now, you can do 30 frames per second in JPEG in electronic shutter only, which I do not recommend doing. You will get some warping. Just keep in mind, if you're gonna shoot a subject that's moving like this one, who's moving the wand of the bubbles, you can see that it's warping and it's bowing. So if you're gonna shoot fast action or fast sports with anything that can bow, you are gonna see that, but that's the same that you would have expected with the Z6 uh, and the Z6 II. So just keep that in mind that if you're shooting a subject that's not really moving fast, you can shoot electronic and get away with it. Let me jump in here real quick because I want to show you Fropack 4 in action on this JPEG taken with the Nikon ZF, starting with Blue's Clues. Then we've got Brooklyn, C41, Copper Tone, DeLorean, High C, Kaleidoscope, Mel Brooks, Saltwater Taffy, Thick, Tin Type, Wet Hot American Summer, and my all-time favorite from Fropack 1 is Skittles with one click. But don't forget, we now have adaptive presets X1, X2, X3, and X4 that are amazing. So look, if you wanna speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, or you're honestly tired of presets that you get from other people not working, ours just work. We created 14 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash Fropack4. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the before and the afters, if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to save even more, you can get the Grand Slam bundle that includes Fro Pack 1, 2, 3, and 4, and of course, Skittles. Now, let's get back to the video. Now let's move on to the autofocus, which you guys know I love talking about. You have 299 AF points, you have 3D tracking, you have your subject tracking. Now it's not as good as the Z8 and Z9, which have the new Xpeed 7 processor, and partly that's because of a stacked sensor. Now it is better, and I would say much better, than the Z6 II and the Z6 and the Z7 and the Z7 II, so it's getting closer to the Z8 and Z9, but there are those limitations that holds it back from getting to that point. But why don't we show you, take you inside of the camera's electronic viewfinder to show you exactly how the autofocus is working. <laughs>
it looked pretty good. I tried a few different modes. There's the 3D tracking. I did the all encompassing with the face detection. And then I selected a box myself to try and have it find the focus where I wanted it to be. It, there's a lot of different options that you have. But one of the issues I ran into is when the little girl was blowing bubbles and she's holding the wand out in front of her face, the electronic viewfinder is showing that it's on her on her eye, but it's on the wand every time I take a picture. That just shouldn't be. And I say that because case in point is when you use any of the cannons, I have to fight the camera to try and find the object and not the face. So I physically have to turn it off from the face detection and the lock on tracking to then focus on a subject that's in the way because it's gonna find it time and time again. This isn't the first Nikon camera that ran into this issue. We saw this with the Z8 where it was focused right on the main subject but ended up back focused for some odd reason, even though it showed us the box in the right place. This is a tweak that I hope Nikon gets to, but I will say that the autofocus is much better, thus why we would like to see this in a Z6 III and maybe even tweak it even more to get it closer to the Z8 and the Z9. The max shutter speed is 1 8,000th of a second, which is nice because most pro cameras do 1 8,000th instead of the amateur ones that do 1 4,000th. But when you go into the electronic shutter mode, you still have 1 8,000th of a second, whereas some other cameras can go up to 1 32,000th or 1 64,000th, which allows me to shoot at 1 2 better. When I was shooting at 1 2 with this camera, I had to maybe tweak out of 1 2 a little bit because it was too bright and I couldn't get a fast enough shutter speed to compensate for that, but that's not that big of a deal. Most people aren't shooting at one, two, like I tend to do in bright daylight. Now, this is interesting. There's dual card slots. There's a UHS-2 SD card slot, and now there is a micro SD card slot. That's right, micro, not micro, the guy from Deadliest Catch or Dirty Jobs, but an actual micro SD card. Now, this is interesting because you would think that it's gonna slow down the shooting. Now, what I will tell you is when you're shooting, it does take longer to get from the buffer to the micro SD card for it to write all those files. But I did not run out of space when I was shooting in the buffer. So that wasn't a problem. I thought that might be, but also if you use the micro SD card to transfer to a computer, those are generally much slower for transferring. So it's gonna take a lot longer. Now, in terms of battery, you have the ENEL15C battery, which is the same battery battery that you find in the Z6s, the Z62, the Z7s, the 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 I got into a Mitch McConnell loop right there and the the Z8. So it's different than the ZFC, which uses a smaller battery. Now, if you do go with the small rig grip, which I highly recommend, you can still take the battery out and access that door without a problem. But in order to get to that micro SD card, you actually have to take out the battery to get to it. Not a big deal at all. Now, in terms of IBIS, you have eight stops of image stabilization when paired with certain new VR lenses. And for those landscape shooters who want more megapixels, you've got 96 megapixels of pixel shift, where you can take up to 32 photos to get that 96 megapixel pixel shift image. Now, moving on to video, because we all know that retro cameras could, could do video. You've got full width 10-bit 422-4K, oversampled from 6K up to 30 frames per second. You got your 4K 60 with a DX crop. Now, all you video shooters out there, don't yell at Nikon for doing crop. Like, why is it? Who cares? It does 4K 60 if that's what you really want to do, and it has a crop with it. Not a big deal. Now, it's rated up to 125 minutes of 4K 60 recording uh, in terms of overheating. I will tell you that as soon as I turn the camera on, it was in an overheating warning and I was just shooting stills. So it didn't overheat for me and it was, yes, it was like 90 some degrees out, but it was also inside right before that. So we don't know what that really means, but it did show me that warning symbol right off the bat. And just to be clear, we had the auto temperature cutoff set to high. So we did make sure that that was set that way. You could do 1080 up to 120 frames per second. Let me jump in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking to build your very own online portfolio, use what I use for jaredpollen.com and have used for over 10 years because it's simple, easy, and affordable, and you don't need to know any coding. Head on over to squarespace.com slash photo to get your 14-day free trial. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now, let's get back to the video. 
The body itself is $2,000. Now, if you wanna pair it with the 40 millimeter F2 kit lens, it's $2,240. That begs the question, when you're comparing it to something from Canon or something from Sony that's also $2,000, why would you go with this? other than the coolness factor. That's just something, if someone's looking to get a new camera today, would they look at this or would they look at something like a ZFC style camera or an R8 or an R62 from Canon? That's for them to decide. For me as a photographer first, the retro style doesn't matter to me. I don't think that's a big deal. Maybe they're going after the Fuji people who like to have the retro style camera, but will never have a full frame camera. Maybe they're going after those people to get them into something like this. Now, for whatever reason, Nikon thinks that ZFC owners are gonna upgrade to a full frame body. But remember, this is about the coolness factor. It's not about what the camera does as much as how it looks. So I don't think that a someone's gonna spend a thousand dollars more. I don't think that makes sense at all. So who is it actually for? I mean, I think a wandering photographer who wants to take one pancake lens with them and likes the retro feel and the retro style and wants to slow down, maybe it's for them, that might make sense. But I'm more of the, the feeling like, if you wanna go retro, why don't you just make a camera that has a winder on it and it forces you to wind the winder every time? Take out the bells and the whistles, take out the video, make it default EVF so that it's ultra bright and doesn't have the simulation on. Do that if you really wanna go retro retro and that can cut down on the price if you take out all the bells and the whistles because anytime you put on a big piece of glass on this camera does it really matter what it ends up looking like now what i will say is the image quality is superb the lens choices are fantastic nikon has a great lens there and the image quality that i got out of it i'm really happy with even though i just had the jpegs and they look fantastic but i still will say that the, the autofocus is imperfect but it is better than the Z6 II. Now, I do think that Nikon owners who are waiting for a Z6 III are gonna be more upset that this camera came out first because they're like, hi, what about us? We're actually working people. It's not saying that you can't use the, the ZF as a professional camera because I've proven to you, you can get great results with it. It's more about functionality for the everyday pro. But now I'm gonna sign off. Thank you very much for watching. Jared, pull in front of photo.com. See ya.